Welcome back to CAD Star. I get a lot of questions about parameters. I want to make several statements of the Klim perception. Number one is parameters are impacted by how you place your reflective medium. Now we have options in the reflective medium. We have our traditional titanium dioxide. Uh, my favorites are the reflective medium in a can. For instance, I like the Opti spray. I like the Vita powder spray and contrast spray has had mixed experiences. The current ones that are out with the new nozzle are phenomenal. The can mixes a lot better, it's easier to spray and it's easier to clean up. Particularly in contrast spray, if you clean it up before saliva gets on it, it cleans up really fast. I want my reflective medium to be applied fairly rapidly. I want it to be smooth. I don't want boulders on the margins. I want to be able to dry it. The contrast spray, my basic technique with that, and also the Vita powder spray, but I'm, I'm starting to lean more toward the contrast spray. I did like the Vita powder when it first came out, and I hadn't tried the new contrast spray since that's been released. You shake the can, make sure you blow the nozzle out, and then you do a light mist. As soon as that light mist is there, you hold the restat about halfway down to accomplish that. So make sure you get that, that, that feel down there because if, if it's a new can and you haven't tested the restat, you, you blow it and it's like you know a sneeze on the tooth with your reflective medium and it just doesn't look good. But even if that were to happen, if you take your air syringe and blow the area, it just, thins the reflective medium down and a lot of times with just one pass of contrast spray we're getting incredible optical impressions as you see on your screen. Why is that important? If, if we're consistent with our optical impression in both the way we hold our camera, we're not pitching and rolling over the preparation areas, when we're taking the buckle bite and you, we do roll for the buckle area, make sure that roll does not happen over the preparation and the proximal contacts next to the preparation. That's critical. There could be a problem with seating that restoration if we do roll too much. You can probably get away with three degrees, but not more. That technique is, is important. So same technique for your optical impression, same technique for your reflective medium. Those two components impact your parameters. So if you're pitching and rolling a lot, or if you have a patient that just can't sit still, your parameters may not be reliable. There may be optical distortions, and if that's the case, you don't know where to go. I get these questions all the time is, I'm changing my parameters around, just try to make them fit. And we need to go back, and I, and I say this from clinical experience, in other words, I'm a wet finger seric dentist. I'm in the trenches like you guys are. I'm doing multiple restorations. Where your technique of your optical impression and reflective medium style shows up is in multiple teeth, particularly if you're doing a quadrant or you're doing veneers. I was just experimenting this last week with some veneers. I did four in a row and I wanted to just kind of roll a little bit and see what would happen. Well, guess what happened when I seated those? I had to adjust the mesial and distal line angles on the preparation. So I had to adjust the internal portion of my ceramic and some of my preparations. Now, once I did that, the margins were closed like gold, but that's not what I consider a really optimal seric experience. I'm going back to my Klim technique, and that is don't pitch and roll, if anything, more than three degrees and try not to yaw in your optical impression. So when we get to the parameters, then they'll be consistent for us. Hope that helps.